the aspirated consciousness. Uh, ba ba. Consciousness. Ga, huh? Aspirated consciousness. Consonants. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. You know the definition of consonant? Yeah. Okay. Jaj ha, ta ha. Huh? Aspirated. So, if you talk with Americans, they can't pronounce these. They are incapable of pronouncing those sounds. Huh? Just like everybody in America, they pronounce Chile, Chile. Yes. Oh, you're, we went, you went to Chile. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, I went to Chile. <laughs> because in the, it, doesn't it make sense to pronounce the name of the country and the language that's spoken in that country? I mean, it always made sense to me. Uh, similarly, there really isn't a, any place named India. You look on the flag, you look on the money, uh, the name is Bharata. Uh, B-H, long A, <laughs> Bharata. But why does anybody call it India? Who started that? Oh, some British guy. Well, who cares about what they think? You know? I, I'm always amazed that right? people just like cave into these things and they don't bother to go back to the original meaning or the original word or the original language, the original sound, the original name, the original significance. Mm -hmm. But that's what we discover when we do research on uh, misunderstood terms, is that to call something by its proper name, its proper term, is very powerful. This allows you to, you know, specify the type of manifestation that you're talking about. And anyway, how did I get into this subject? The gestures. Ah, yes. So, yeah, just like there is a Vak Siddhi, that by knowing how to speak truth, you can create manifestation. Uh, there's also, I, I would say, a, a related kind of siddhi that comes from knowing how to move. Uh, when I studied martial arts, I, was, I got into this very deeply. Uh, that um, one of the ways that people interact is by energy. And when you, when you move your body in certain ways, you create patterns of energy that have effects on other people, that have effects on your environment. You know? So when you, when you learn how to manipulate energy by movement, you can create all kinds of effects around you um, through manipulating the energy. I mean, it's just as natural as speaking or anything like that. And these gestures, these are a part of the power, part of the science of manipulating energy to create specific effects. Why not use it? Why tell your kids not to do it? This is power. You're taking their power away. You're disempowering them by telling them not to use these advanced techniques. I think three quarters of martial arts is actually about disabling an opponent by certain powerful gestures that uh, confuse their mind and, and make them unable to respond uh, properly and giving you an opening to attack. I, I never forget the moment where I understood this. Uh, I was studying Qigong with this little old Chinese lady. Uh, Mrs. Yu. She's about five foot two, uh, 81 years old. And she could kick anybody's ass. <laughs> I mean, she was amazing. You couldn't, you couldn't even touch her. I mean, literally, you couldn't touch her. She demonstrated this the very first class. She said, okay. She was talking with her little old lady Chinese friend. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and she said, okay, all you guys line up on the other side of the room, and one at a time, you run across the room and jump on me. 
And we're all going, oh, but this is you. You so she said, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> she goes like that. So she's talking with her friend. You know? And the and the guy and these big guys, you know, big American guys, right? They line up on the other side of the room. And one at a time, we run across the room and jump at her, right? But before we ever got there, we would trip over our own feet. Uh, or lose our balance, or something would happen. None of us could get near her. And she would just, she'd be talking, oh, it's on the wall. <laughs> Never even, you know, broke a sweat. We couldn't touch her. We literally could not touch her. And, uh, you know, later on when I was studying Xing Yi, I learned a lot of these techniques, how you, you know, you uh, ward off an opponent simply by energy. You, know, you move your hands in a certain way, you know, like the mandrake gestured hypnotically. You know. uh, there's really something to that. You can gesture in such a way that a, that a person's mind will, like, follow the hand, you know. And meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it all takes place so quickly, and a big part of the of the key is getting inside somebody's range. Attention you, range or something? What's that? Attention range? No, their reach. Reach. Okay. Yeah, most people when they're fighting, they try to like stay outside, you know, but a really really good fighter, he'll get right up in your face, and bam. It's all over in about a half a second. You don't even know what hit you. And, uh, yeah, I remember the, the first time I sparred with somebody really good, I couldn't even figure out how he was beating me. Yeah, it just appears suddenly. It's just like, yeah, it's like, like we'd be standing there and go. <laughs> the next thing I was lying on the floor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what happened? You know, there was this explosion, and then boom, I'm, I'm flying up against the wall. Similar to misunderstood terms? Yes, it's very similar to misunderstood terms. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Mm -hmm. There's a, a moment, moment of, of unconsciousness. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right, right. When you, you experience something that is beyond your understanding, and the next thing you know, you're out of it. So, this, this experience led me to understand that there is a science of motion that is, is so powerful that it can induce changes in another person's consciousness such that they lose control of their muscles. Hmm. That's uh, yeah, and it, it's, it has, all has to do with energy and stuff like this. It's, it's very, and, and oh yeah, 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 the moment when I understood this, you know, after I saw this demonstration, she never did this again, by the way. The whole time, the three years that I studied with her, only the first class, it was like, this is what's possible. Okay, now, here's how to do it. <laughs> and after certain, so many years, I think I studied this stuff for about 15 years altogether. And, uh, but one day, I was looking through some book, and, uh, oh yeah, it was by that Dr. Yang from, from uh, Boston. Very good books on Qigong, by the way, if you're interested. Uh, there was an old Chinese painting uh, of uh, this, this little old guy with a big belly. <laughs> Remind you of anybody you know? Anyway, he's, he's walking out of this palace or temple or someplace like this. Right? And there's all these guards. And they're like all, they all have their weapons out and they're trying to get him, right? And they're all like tripping over their own feet, you know, falling over each other, uh, you know, like just they can't even get near the guy, right? And he's just like casually walking out of the temple, you know? And this is, this is when I realized, oh, okay, so this is, this was not a, this demonstration, this is not something that was like only this lady can do. It's like there have been many people who could do this kind of thing in the past. It's a well-known thing. 
or at least it, no. Tradition. It's, it's yeah. There's a there's been a living tradition of this kind of art going on for a long time. But we can only imagine, you know, somebody like Arjuna. You know the kind of skills that he must have had, you know, to be a Maharati fighter. He is tell they tell in the scriptures a Maharati can fight with ten thousand opponents simultaneously. Ten thousand. One one shot. Of arrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they can do all kinds of incredible things that nobody can do today, because they understood these Vedic arts at a very, very high level. So, see, this whole Western society, they they try to suppress anything that's advanced, anything that's beyond the normal.